somebody scratch live in front of me for real. So okay, and I even though I had the concert down, I, I practice every day. Okay. So and I got it down back, you know. So uh, at the, how long how you know how long have you been performing? As a DJ or MC? Both. As a DJ, 86 was well, like you know, really out there in public eye. I would say like 88, 88 to present time now. As an MC, that's a whole different story. That that's about the same thing, same from 88 to present. So how did you get into MC? Man, you know everybody wanted to rap. You had the neighborhood heroes. Um, you had Shorty G. You had Marvel Mac. Uh, you had all these, the, 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 the South Side crew. You had all these kids. I was getting down back in the day, and you wanted to be a part of it. First, you started as breakers. Either you was a breaker, or you did graffiti, or you was a DJ, or you was a rapper. I wanted to be a part of that whole aspect, but at the time, since I was taking the mixes, they dubbed me the DJ before I was DJing. And I was cool, but then they had this dude in the crew named Jimmy D. He used to always rap, and he used to mess with me all the time. Dude was dope. He was like Rock Kim at the time. Rock Kim was, wasn't Rock Kim. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But Rockin' was in the mess by the time I took out the melody came out. Check out my melody came out. And he used to battle me every day. And I ain't really had no lyrics. I'm making up stuff like I'm a bamboo stick. And I, you know, you got dirt on your lip. You know, I used to do wild stuff because I was a kung fu head. So what made me polish my craft, Shorty G said, man, look, you go to tape. Check this out. Tell me what you think. And, and listen to these dudes. This is how you're supposed to get it in because they knew how to rap. It was Public Enemy, my 98. That joint right there had me geeked as hell. Then Curtis Man tried it with MCT, had me geek. Um, these cats influenced me. So I sat down and writing rhymes and learned how to put perfect words, the correct words in a sentence, you know, to make it bust. And I came, came. He's called some Jimmy the Rap Warrior, so I said, you're a rap warrior, but I'm a king. So I'm King Titan, you know. A titan is a, a, no, a fierce warrior, you know, from back down from nothing. So that's what it was. Mm -hmm. That's how the name King Titan came about as far as we have seen. And DJ, so I <laughs> split persona. Hey, okay, that's all cool, man. Like, uh, you had a group back then, you know, like, uh, you had a couple of groups. So you, like, you started, like, East Rock Nation. East Rock, I started East Rock because I didn't know about Shy Rock then. Shy Rock was in existing. I used to hear them talking about Shy Rock, Shy Rock, Shy Rock. I said, man, who's Shy Rock? And later, said, we East Rock. We on the East Side, got them, you know. And, and I got a couple of my homies to get down with that movement until one day I met um, Super LP Raven I, from Ice Incorporated, who was a member of Shy Rock. You know, I became his DJ eventually. And he said, man, you should meet Kingdom Rock, you know, blah, 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 and these dudes. And, we're gonna get together. So he had a party in his backyard. I don't know if you remember that party. And I met King and all this. Man, yeah, you should come to the meetings on Sunday, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, cool. And that's when Super Transfer is now. We get on the bus for a dollar, you know what I'm saying? And ride all day. And we went to the meeting, man. It was like minded brothers. There wasn't no bull crap going on. Cats was on the same page. And I felt at home with that. So I. I rolled from Shot Rock since then, you know what I'm saying? This is like 87, 86, 87, yeah. Okay. But you also had another crew, uh, um Which was, No, no, before that, uh, I remember Def Def Rock. Def Rock. Or something like that. It was like uh Def Jam Rockers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? No, like how how did that come about? <laughs> that was <laughs> Vols. That was Vol's idea because every MC back in the day, which was, I want to be on Def Jam Records. Because Def Jam had the hardest artists, and Def Jam was making moves and making money. So I want to be Def Jam. So they became Def Jam Rockets, which was Vo Mac, which was really was Marvel Mac then. His brother Shorty G, or Night, he called some G Wiz. And uh, it was me, and my brother was the human doc box. We had uh, Cleavon, which was our uh, Clee. You know, it was a little crew. We used to go around battling MCs and stuff. We had Raphael up in there. Well, Raphael came with this crew called the, the M&Ms. 
you know, Mars, but we call them M&M Cruises. It's Mars bars, M&M candies, and all that. And it was dope. So, that's that was them. That's how Def Rock, I mean, the Def Jam Rock is really Vols out there. I was just a part of it. You know, as the, the beatboxing DJ. And I was scratching on the real to real. That's, nobody can take that away from you, dude. I was the first dude to scratch on the real to real. Outside, getting it in. And it sounded cold, you know? Like, so, how, how like, where did uh, the whole Witchboard come from? Witchboard stands from Mole Man. The original crew was called Witchboard, which was Vot Kill. Mixed massacre, me. I was still King Titan back then. Uh, Hispanic and Fat Man T. And Juan. So that, that was the crew right there. And back then, we was on horrorcore shit. This was before horrorcore existed in New York, before the Grave Diggers. I'm sorry, Fruit Kwan, but we, we did it first. You know, peace out to Fruit Kwan. my man right there. I'm his DJ, but I gotta tell it like it was from my perspective. We was hardcore MCs doing you know, hardcore way back before Great Diggers existed. But it's the truth, you know, everybody can tell you that. And well, everything in our concept was horror. Horror, horror, horror. And we used to come in by Q and sit down and come up with these wild names. You know, like uh, Grim Nefarious and all this. And I named, I actually named Mix Massacre, Mix Massacre. His DJ name in the house world was Ready, Albert Ready Rock E. Yeah. That was his name. And Rakim gave his panic his name because he was his panic. His panic. His panic. That's what that is, a broke down version of panicking, which got something to do with fit. You know, heart. And which board, because we was wicked on the boards, on the mix board. We was wicked in mixing music. So that's where which board came from. Wickedness. Being wicked on putting these tracks out here. Production, DJ, and mixing stuff down. That was us. That's where it came from. When I left, me and Vi had a falling out, man. I ain't going to get into that because it's still my man. We was young. We didn't know too much about the business back then, but now, you know, we on point. I left, I took the name with me, and I started Witchboard Productions. When I started dealing with people like doing Twister, Twister, I did Twister's first joint, got him signed. My name blew up off of that. And then I started Witchboard Crew, which was me, IJ, and Rilla Max. It wasn't no Aztec. Aztec snaked his way in. He started hanging out. Janet was cool with it. I really wasn't cool with it because me and him was not like that. But I'm, I'm saying the truth. A lot of people don't know the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth because it's my crew. I just know it. He was in, I just rolled with it because that's what it was. You know, they, they wanted to hang out with him, fine, he, he could be in, whatever. And that's that, you know, we started doing shows, kicking it everywhere, and battling everybody. You don't know no rhymes, and just going into cycles, doing what we did, man, you know. We, we, so so what happened to Witchboard? Why, why, like in the 90s, you know, like with a lot of crews, you know, like, it, it peaked at a point, Witchboard, and then it kind of spiraled out of control. It spiraled because of differences okay. in, in, the art, in the art form itself of hip-hop. Me, I'm a hardcore hip-hop head, underground, one-on-one. -on -one. You hear what's playing in the background. I listen to Boom Pap and a lot of other cats. Well, two, it's like this. It was a split. The first Witchboard album we did was called Venomous. Double tape back then. With no CD, it was double tape. And it was banging. I don't even got a copy of that. And we got a buzz from that. After that, I think I'm out. RJ wanted to change his name to Big Nasty. And wanted to do solo joints, which is cool because he started as a solo artist. And I respect that. And he became Big Nasty. And we, we rolled with it. Everybody's going to do solo albums. My album was called The Weight. I mean the heavy hip hop. You know, it, that's what it was. The weight, 100% heavy hip hop. And uh, that's my release. I still got the tape here. I never released it. You know why? Because I was too busy doing everybody else's production and stuff. You know, trying to get in. Rhythm X, which is Lil Maya now. He put out 
um, Stranglewood episode. Which, episode one, Stranglewood. Yeah, well, yeah you know, it's, it's still. It, yeah, yeah, y'all did that boat, Rocky and Boat, we can skip, yeah, man. That yeah, shit yeah, hot, man. Love that, man. Because, you know, I used to make these characters up when I was a kid, man. I put that up. That's a lot. The really? skit. Oh, wow. Yeah, man. I'll send it to you. The skit is uh, online. I think it. I get the CD right, but that'd be dope to have that. And, um, Aztec had this project separated from Burger. I almost had solo joints, and then we tried to come back together like Voltron and do a whole new album called Anime. You know, animated form of art. That's what, was, that's what it was. And um, it sucked. Production sucked. Uh, we was rushing lyrics. Like, come on, let's write the song, get it together. Instead of versus us taking the trap, going home and writing for like a couple of days or whatever, to get yourself together, get the right mind frame for the music. Do you think, the, you know, it was because. You guys were apart for so long working on solo individual things. Nah, not because no, 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 let me ask you. Do you think it was because, like, the fact that you guys branched out and started growing as individuals? And, you know, no, by the time you come back together, you know, everybody's hands was in a different place. Let me place. tell you, whatever we was doing was always supportive of each other's work. Whatever we was doing, if it was together or solo, and we always caught us together. Even though we're working on solo part, and then on projects, though we always was around to help out on each other's project. It wasn't a fact of you know because we were working on solo joints, this, that, and the other. I think it's more or less of creative differences. That's what split it. You know, like hey, you know, I'm not. Uh, well, you know, I don't. Nah. Yeah. And this is cold. I'm gonna do this. To each his own, you know, it's still like that today. You know, everybody's still doing solo joints, this, that, and the other. Is there a chance another Witch Boy album will come? Who knows? It all depends on how people feel it. But, you know, I'm down for anything as long as it's going to make us, you know, keep, keep putting out good music. That's what I want to do.